As we've seen uh, these latest curbs to contain the virus, they're more relaxed than the last round of curbs, given that more sectors are open for business. But given that more states are under lockdown except for Sarawak and the measures are already being extended to February 4th, what is the daily cost to the economy from these measures? Thank you. So good morning, Zofi. Thank you for having me. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say that the uh, for Malaysia today, the stability and consistency of policies are crucial yeah, in controlling COVID-19 uh, and enabling the country to be on its economic recovery path. Uh, so that's why uh, as we, uh, we announced the new MCO. Uh, it's actually MCO version 2.0. And as what you said just now, Sophie, it is uh, slightly different from what we had earlier, the, our earlier movement control order. Uh, more economies are open. We've learned from the previous uh, MCO on what we need to do this time around. Uh, we need we need to get this right. Uh, as you know, um, to get this right means that uh, our econ only then can our economy rebound better in 2021. Uh, we have seen the resumption of economic activities globally and domestically in the last few quarters. Uh, Malaysia. But with that said, Zafrul, what's the hit potentially to the economy on a daily basis given the expansion of the MCO 2.0 that we've heard from this week? Correct. So that's that's where I'm getting at. Because first of all, I wanted to to reiterate what you said that this time the MCO 2.0 is slightly different from MCO 1.0, where more economy sectors are open, especially the essential services. So as such, if you remember last time, uh, uh, we've announced that the impact per day of the previous MCO was around 2.4 billion ringgit a day, whereas this time round is around 700 million ringgit uh, per day. Right. So we have also, additionally, we have also started to implement the various stimulus packages that are still ongoing and the recently approved uh, budget 2021 and the recent uh, assistance package, uh, which will help uh, mitigate the impact uh, to the economy. And that being said, Zafrul, given the likely drag this quarter to the economy, will the government be revising its forecast for GDP this year? Analysts are, have already uh, revised their forecast slightly lower. For now, the government will continue to maintain its projection. Uh, we have considered the third wave for COVID-19 that's happening today. Uh, uh, and in fact, we factored some of it in the formulation of Budget 2021. If you remember that the uh, third wave started in October, November uh, last year. So the impact of MCO, which I mentioned just now, about 700 million ringgit per day, uh, is expected to definitely have an impact uh, to the economy. We'll be monitoring this, uh, but key sectors, especially export sectors and other sectors uh, supporting export, for example, manufacturing, industrial, and also domestic infrastructure projects are still ongoing. Uh, however, as I stated time uh, and time again, the government is committed to support uh, the businesses uh, and people as well. And we will need to deploy, if need be, we will deploy more resources uh, to combat uh, COVID-19 to support uh, Zafro, the economy. Zafro, with that target range for GDP still being maintained at 65 to 7.5%, will that be on the lower end or the higher end uh, most likely this year? Well, again, you know, we are at the first quarter. It's still early days. Uh, so we are continue to maintain our forecast. But as you know, uh, our forecast is at risk uh, given that what's happening uh, with the MCO. So it will be at the lower band uh, of our forecast. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're seeing the yield curve in Malaysia now the steepest since early 2017 amid some concerns over growth and fiscal consolidation. Will there be moves to uh, expand the debt ceiling potentially and will the short, or reducing the budget shortfall to 5.4 percent be achievable? Yep. Okay. Um, if you look at the yield curve, uh, if you look at where the debt levels are today, uh, we are still continue to forecast that our debt level will be below the 60 percent uh, ceiling that we've set uh, uh, earlier on. Uh, and what we've announced uh, recently um, in terms of stimulus packages uh, for this year, which is, uh, we call it uh, Permai, uh, is a fiscal injection of about 15 billion ringgit, where uh, most of the money will be coming from the one uh, budget that has been allocated uh, in the budget 2021. Like I said, it's still early, it's still in January. Uh, so there is no revision also in our uh, debt levels. Uh, we continue to uh, maintain our forecast that we will be below 60% uh, of our um, debt ceiling limit that we have set uh, for, for Malaysia. While it's still early in the year, Malaysia is under a state of emergency for the first time uh, in about 50 years. Are there plans by the government to shore up the economy using emergency powers? If so, what ideas are potentially on the table? Yeah. 
Well, let me just rem remind you, uh, Sophie, that the government priority is always to protect the lives and livelihood of the people. Uh, unfortunately, the Prevention and Contro of Control uh, of Infectious Disease Act 1988, which is the act that we used before, called Act 342, uh, has been used to contain uh, the further spread of COVID-19. And we feel that this Act 342 is no longer adequate uh, to contain the worsening pandemic uh, in the country. And you've seen the number, uh, the alarming rise in the infection, infection numbers from double digits uh, in the previous uh, wave to the thousands of uh, cases per day uh, within a matter of weeks. Uh, something drastic had to be done. So as such, it is crucial for the government uh, to be able to move swiftly and without impediments to deploy crucial measures uh, and mobilize uh, the necessary resources, as you mentioned. One example is, uh, of course, uh, to yesterday uh, and, uh, and the week before, we've been discussing with the private healthcare on how the government can tap uh, on the private healthcare resources uh, to ensure that we can cope uh, uh, in, in addressing some of the concerns and challenges uh, that the public health care is facing today. Now, Zafrul, has the pandemic derailed the recovery of 1MDB assets? And what about the status of outstanding 1MDB debt uh, under the current conditions? Thank you. Um, the 1MDB, um, it, it, the, we have continued even the last year when the pandemic started, right? Just for just to remind you again, uh, on the asset recovery for Malaysia, Malaysia has recovered around 13.4 billion ringgit in cash and physical assets linked to 1MDB. Uh, of course, the biggest recovery in, is the US dollar sees assets and the, uh, then also the Goldman uh, settlement. I think the Goldman settlement is about 2.5 billion US dollar. This is excluding the government, uh, the government's guarantee of 1.4 billion dollars. So 1MDB debt uh, servicing is already part of the government's projection also under budget 2021. Uh, the next step, uh, regardless of uh, the pandemic COVID-19, is to secure the remaining assets uh, above and beyond uh, what we have achieved uh, today. Uh, and the Malaysian government co remains committed to undertake a responsible and pragmatic approach in the repatri repatriation process that benefits uh, Malaysia and the people. Now, Zafrul, Joe Biden is officially in the White House. Remains to be seen if U.S.-China tensions will remain elevated and if the U.S. will re-engage in major trade deals in Asia, especially after the signing of the RCEP last November. What are the potential opportunities for Malaysia, given its uh, ties with the U.S., which is Malaysia's third biggest trading partner? Yeah. Actually, the U.S., as you rightly said, is a huge partner for, a trading partner for Malaysia. Uh, third largest total trade is actually around close to 130 billion ringgit. Uh, just in the first three quarters of 2020. Uh, this is around 10% uh, of Malaysia's total trade. Uh, as you know, China is also our uh, top trading partners. Uh, so we feel that, we hope that under the Biden administration, uh, the US-China trade tensions will uh, be diffused uh, and we hope that global trade can function in a more orderly manner under the ambit of WTO. Uh, the fact that US has restored uh, ties with WHO and now also, it's a, again, it's a signatory to the Paris Agreement uh, are positive points, right? So in terms of uh, that, we feel that the global green energy uh, and investment is going to be positive uh, for, Mal for Malaysia. Uh, the sustainability agenda is a key uh, lesson uh, from that from pandemic. As I mentioned to you before, Sophie, this is why we have decided for the first time to embrace the new SDG, the, the, a few of the SDG goals uh, in the creating of our budget 2021. Yeah, let's expand on that, Zafrul, because investing in clean energy and the green push is not only something the U.S. is focused on, but other major economies. So in light of this, uh, how is Malaysia adapting to this shift towards that green pivot? Yeah. So various entities and agencies in Malaysia's public and private sectors uh, have also just begun their efforts uh, to embrace ESG principles, uh, which bodes well uh, for attracting uh, future SRI investments, uh, especially from, from, uh, from other countries, and uh, in the U.S. and Europe especially. So the fact that, uh, as I mentioned, the fact that U.S. now is again a signatory to the Paris Climate Change Agreement uh, will be a boon uh, for the green and energy investments. Uh, Malaysia ourselves, uh, we have... We uh, have made a commitment towards sustainability, beginning with the acceptance of the 23 Agenda uh, and the 17 UN SDGs. So Malaysia capital markets have started this first and has moved towards supporting ESG uh, measures, including that we, we also plan to issue our first sovereign uh, SDG bond this year. Uh, we have done uh, many initiatives uh, related to tax, which encourages uh, investments in this uh, area. And we also, as a government, have uh, continued with the Green Technology Financing Scheme uh, with, a, with a fund size of close 2 billion ringgit uh, guaranteed by the government. 
so furthermore, the Malaysia government is also actively push, pursuing uh, for SRI as well as green mm -hmm. energy technology financing as well.